So previously we talked about uh, how we can get so-called diffusion coefficient if the diffusion coefficient does not change with concentration. And in those cases, quite often the so-called fixed law, the analytical solution, there will be an analytical solution. And once you get a concentration profile, you can fit, fit, mathematically fit the mirrored concentration profile to your analytical solution and you can easily get the diffusion coefficient. So today we are going to talk about the case when the diffusion coefficient will change, read to yourself, will change with concentration. The diffusion coefficient will change with con concentration. So how in those cases uh, do we get diffusion coefficient? Now we have solid solution B in A, right? Solid solution of B in A, and similar size going through, let's say, uh, vacancy diff mechanism. As what we said, because the diffusion coefficient will change with concentration, there will be no analytical solution for the fixed second law. The so-called second order differential equation, there will be no simple analytical solution. There can be a numerical solution, but not analytical solution. So let's say we still have these two piece. One piece, another two piece, they have different uh, initial concentration. And uh, let's say downhill diffusion, the B in piece two would go towards piece one, and A in piece one would go towards piece two. Okay, that's just uh, the um, image. And this is our fix second law right the left side states how fast does local concentration change with time depends on how fast the inside change with location but what is inside it's actually the negative of so-called diffusional flux based on fixed first law d times concentration Gradient. How fast does concentration change with location times d? That's negative flux. How fast does this thing change with location? That tells me how fast the concentration change with time. But because we said now diffusion coefficient is not a constant, we cannot take the d out, and quite often we don't have an analytical solution at all. But we still, at any given moment, we still can measure what? What do I show here? Concentration profile, right? For a fixed time of diffusion, we can still measure the concentration change with location, right? We can still use whatever depth profiling mechanism, we can still get a concentration profile. And for this piece one, piece two case, we can imagine far away, in piece one, I have C1. Far away from the interface, deep in two, I have C2. And somewhere in between, if it's single phase, like, uh, let me assume, it's in, assume they are in the single phase region, then I should have a continuous change. Make sense? Single phase region, so they would uh, continuous. And eventually, what would happen? Eventually, after infinite long time, what would happen? Completely uniform, right? Going from two different composition to one single composition. Okay, but any, at any given moment, given time t, I would have a profile. Let's say we measure it. Okay. Uh, the scientist, the uh, last name, the Matano, he gave a kind of graphical solution. Graphical solution of what? of so-called diffusion coefficient for any for any concentration in between here. The diffusion coefficient will change from C1 all the way to C2, but Montano gave the graphical solution for any location. How do we get the number? Okay. Again, although we don't have analytical solutions, but we can the initial condition still holds, right? What's our initial condition? Well, before any diffusion happens, right at the moment when we join these two P's, do you see x greater than zero? It's 
x greater than zero if this is my zero at the interface it's c1 right x smaller than zero initially it's everything c2 that's so-called initial conditions similarly there should be boundary conditions when what are the boundary conditions i leave them here do they make sense x goes to positive infinity where am i this is zero this is positive x x goes to positive infinity which means far away no matter how long time far away my concentration is always the initial c1 make sense and then when x goes to negative infinity where is it deep in the left side in the c2 right the concentration also remains as c2 so that's the so-called initial about so-called boundary condition right which means no matter how long time it takes far away from the interface the concentration hasn't changed because we diffusion is slow and because of these two i write a related not an independent but a, a related boundary condition let's see if this makes sense to me to you dc over dx that's what this we're plotting c versus x dc over dx is just the so-called local slope right dc over dx when x goes to positive and the negative infinity is zero do these make sense to you the slope doesn't change as we get further and further away on either side it's not independent you see what i mean this boundary condition is not independent from these but it's kind of like a, they are equivalent make sense they are all they are at least related they are not independent they are related okay okay